From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. We're asking hard questions about city water bills and the possibility of an audit to regain public trust in billings. Plus, a road rage suspect appears in court in a case longtime law enforcement officers call appalling. And we're keeping an eye on the elk fire as residents remain on evacuation standby in Dayton, Wyoming. Mm. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Thursday, October 3rd. I'm Augusta McDonald here with Miller Robson. And good morning, Augusta. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. It's going to be a beautiful day today. Yes, it it's is. It's going to be very seasonal. Seasonal, a lot of sunshine today, highs in the 60s, and then we're going to see some changes in the forecast as we move forward. Let's take a step back in time. How did Wednesday wrap up? A good 10 degrees above the norm for our daytime high. It was milder than normal for our overnight low. It was a windy day yesterday. Those winds will be calm today, and then they really start to pick up as we get into Friday afternoon into Saturday. It's been very dry out there with no rain in the forecast. Now we may get lucky and see a few drops of rain on Saturday morning. Very hit or miss showers with the passing of this cold front, so it's not going to make a dent in those moisture deficits for the month and for the year. So nice start this morning. 43, very seasonal out there right now. Feels like 38. Winds out of the north at about 8 miles an hour. Have a little slug of moisture there from Petroleum, Garfield County. Even Weibo may get a little bit of rain this morning. That will peter out as we go along and high pressure continues to keep those dry conditions in place. 30s and 40s for the most part this morning. You can see this is what's heading our way. We're going to have a lot of uh, wind and very dry conditions Friday into Saturday. We'll talk about that with the forecast coming up. All right, Millie, thank you so much for keeping an eye on all of that. And the elk fire continues to threaten residents in and around Sheridan County, Wyoming. That blaze forced more evacuations yesterday and grew in size to over 32,000 acres. The entire town of Dayton is on standby for evacuation this morning. That fire burning in the Bighorn National Forest. Uh, the forest is now closed there from Red Grade Road to the north. Pass Creek Road, Twin Creek Road, and the Tongue River Canyon Road are all under evacuation orders. There's 200 firefighters still battling this blaze, which sits at 0% containment this morning. We'll continue to keep an eye on that. Wednesday night, incident commanders held a public meeting at Tongue River Middle School in Ranchester. Our David Jay was there and brings us the details. It's changed a little bit in Dayton. The fire getting a little bit closer. No football practice today, and everybody in Dayton on standby for the possibility of an evacuation. And because of that, a community meeting that was scheduled at the high school has now been moved to the middle school in Ranchester. Firefighters have battled the fire from the air, and customers from Ranchester monitor the fire from the patio of the Mountain Inn Bar. We're keeping on tonight. We're only a few miles away, and um, you know, we just came up here to stop and see what we could see, and because eventually it might affect us, might not. Who knows? It all depends on the prevailing winds. Those living in Dayton have been in the ready stage for evacuation. Compared to yesterday, it honestly does not look as bad. Um, I'm. I know that the wind's blowing the opposite direction right now, and I'm just supposed to be on standby if that switches. And from the beginning, the Parkman Bar has been the place for nearby residents to get meals and supplies. We have lunch sacks that we're sending out with them, waters, Gatorades. Again, all of this is coming from the community. We have a wonderful community support here in Sheridan County. I could not do any of this stuff without the community support. They were given the pre-notice so everybody was aware that the evacuation might occur. And then when we did issue the evacuation, I think a lot of folks had already uh, got their stuff together and either had left or were prepared to leave. And it's been a stopping place for firefighters. If you can get the truck to it and it's in the prairie, it's not too tough to put out, but the topography is making it pretty difficult. It's um, you know a lot of draws and ditches and stuff where you you just can't get the truck there. Many came out to Tongue River Middle School in Ranchester for the public meeting. We want people to stay safe. Part of that means that if you've been evacuated by the county sheriff, please stay clear of the evacuated area and remain off of all of the closed roads. And that has been going well, but the incident commander called this fire unprecedented in this area with the dry conditions. We will likely see smoke from this fire until there's what we call a season ending event. So when we get snow. When we get a good snow on the mountain is when we'll finally see smoke stop. In Ranchester, David J, MTN News. 
David, thank you so much. The Montana Farm Bureau Foundation has established a disaster relief fund for all ranchers impacted by the Remington fire. If you remember that blaze started in Wyoming a few weeks ago, sp uh, quickly spread in southeastern Montana. It burned 196,000 acres of grass, trees, hay, barns and livestock. The relief fund will take general donations that ranchers will be able to apply to receive. Those funds can be used to purchase livestock or for other needs. Livestock losses from that fire will not be entirely known until cattle are gathered later this fall. That loss, though, is predicted to be substantial. And Yellowstone National Park will scale back its search efforts now to find missing 22-year-old Austin King. King has been missing in the park for more than two weeks since reaching the summit of Eagle Peak. More than 100 people are still searching for King, but officials say they aren't finding any clues. Yellowstone National Park says limited search efforts will continue as long as conditions allow. By now, you're likely tired of campaign ads taking over the airwaves and stuffing your mailbox. Millions of dollars were spent on ads for Montana Senate race this year. And this morning, we're taking a closer look at some of those to see if their claims hold up. Political reporter Jonathan Ambarian examines incumbent Senator John Tester's ads on abortion. Abortion rights have been a major campaign issue for Democratic candidates across the country this year, and that's true for Senator John Tester as well. One recent ad from the committee Republicans for Tester claims that his opponent, Tim Sheehy, would open the door to an abortion ban here in this state. The last thing Montana women need is having the government tell us what we can do with our own bodies. Tim Sheehy wants to let politicians ban abortions even here in Montana. This marks the first major election since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, so it's perhaps no surprise abortion is a hot topic on the campaign trail. Tim Sheehy's campaign says he's proudly pro-life and favors common sense protections for when a baby feels pain, with exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. And in a statement to Montana Public Radio, Sheehy said, quote, further limits must be left to the states. But Senator John Tester's campaign argues that would allow states to introduce broader abortion bans, noting Republicans Republicans in the Montana legislature have already passed laws to tighten abortion rules, even though most have been held up in court. Certainly abortion is a major issue for Democrats for going on the offense. Lewis Jacobson is a chief correspondent with PolitiFact. MTN has partnered with the nonpartisan website to fact check campaign ads like these. She he wants to take away our personal freedoms. Jacobson researched a more specific claim that Sheehy would allow politicians to pass abortion bans without exceptions and found that claim mostly false, although he says there is an element of truth. It would be kind of within a state's right uh, to put in place a ban on abortion with zero exceptions. Um, he personally says he doesn't want to see that happen, but by saying that states sh should decide, he is creating a pathway for the state to do that regardless of what his own personal preference is. While Sheehy has been quoted criticizing CI-128, this year's ballot measure that would specifically add abortion rights to Montana's constitution, he said during Monday night's debate that if Montana voters approve it, he'll respect that. I'm a law and order candidate uh, who believes in our constitution, uh, both of our state and our federal government, and uh, if the people of Montana vote for it and it passes, then it's the law of the land. Sheehy's views on abortion certainly contrast with Tester, who called for reinstating Roe v. Wade at the national level during the debate. Join us at the same time tomorrow for our next Truth Be Told segment, focusing on an ad from the Sheehy campaign. You can find all of our Truth Be Told stories on our MTN websites. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN. Jonathan, thanks so much. A new court filing unsealed in the 2020 election case against former President Donald Trump. In it, special counsel Jack Smith argues that Trump resorted to crimes after losing the election to Joe Biden. The case had been thrown into doubt when the Supreme Court ruled that a president can't be prosecuted for, quote, official acts. The day after Iran fired about 180 missiles at Israel, reporters asked President Biden if he would support an Israeli airstrike on sites related to Iran's nuclear program. The president said, quote, the answer is no. As Israel's military operations against Hezbollah in Lebanon continue, eight Israeli soldiers were killed there Wednesday. And President Biden visited the Carolinas to survey Hurricane Helene's devastation by helicopter. The historic storm has claimed at least 180 lives in several southeastern states. In Tennessee, authorities say they're investigating after 11 workers at a plastics factory were swept away by the catastrophic floodwaters. While the storm approached, the timing of workers released from the plant is in question. 
Back here uh, in our part of the country, a shepherd man has been convicted of threatening to harm former U.S. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy in numerous phone calls to federal agencies. Those include McCarthy's office. 45-year-old Richard Lee Rogers was found guilty of threatening a member of Congress and two counts of harassing phone calls. Federal prosecutors allege that Rogers made repeated calls on February 3, 2023 to staffers at McCarthy's office, even threatening him in one of those calls. U.S. Capitol Police determined Rogers called the office 147 times in 75 minutes that day. His comments started out sexual in nature before turning to threats. In addition, Rogers placed 150 harassing calls to operators at the FBI's National Threat Operations Center between December of 2021 and October of 2022. McCarthy was ousted as speaker in October of last year, ultimately resigning from his seat in Congress. Rogers faces a maximum of six years in prison. And a road rage suspect accused of killing a motorcyclist in Carbon County appeared in court this week. The case even has experienced law enforcement appalled by the alleged actions of 47-year-old Michael Gambale. Gambale was brought back to Montana from Wyoming, where he's now charged with deliberate homicide. Our Charlie Kleps reports. That accident happened here near mile marker 8 of Montana Highway 72. It's a tragic incident that's left both law enforcement and those in the community rattled. As the dust continues to settle, it's very concerning. Many around Carbon County are struggling to comprehend what truly happened last Tuesday. Words are hard to come by on such a senseless tragedy. That senseless tragedy started with a road rage and conflict call near Laurel and ended here where Michael Gambale allegedly used his vehicle to force a motorcycle off the road, killing the driver and seriously injuring the passenger. It's just another any given day and to have this going down the road, uh, basically on motorcycles that are defenseless, it's pretty shocking to everybody. Gambale appeared for the first time in front of a Carbon County judge Wednesday. He pleaded not guilty to one count of murder and three counts of attempted murder. The bond was kept at $1 million despite efforts from his attorney. Carbon County Sheriff Josh McQuillan says that in his 20 years of serving the sheriff's office, he's never seen anything like it. They're used to seeing a lot of tragic things. This is it's just uncalled for. McQuillan confirmed Wednesday that the victim, 70-year-old Martin Hans Peter, was a tourist who was visiting the area from Switzerland, something he says adds to the devastation. These people came here for a reason, to see this beautiful area. We value that. We're very mindful of tourism and what it brings to this county. Some have questioned if it should have happened at all. Gambale was arrested on probation violation on September 17th, but was released on bond just days before this incident. A timeline McQuillan hopes is explained during the investigation. I think there's obviously those questions are being asked right now. I don't have the answers for that. I mean, this is going to be a long process. Gambale's next hearing has been set for November 20th, with a trial scheduled for February 10th. Our sympathy goes out to this family. I mean, this is, this was unprovoked, senseless, really just no words to describe. On. In Carbon County, Charlie Kleps, MTN News.